Welcome back to Drive Your Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Master Coach Carrie Marshall, and it's time to go after those goals. Yeah, whether ready or not, life's coming hard, no breaks, no stop. And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted. I never drop. If you feel a bit out of control and out the box, here's a way that you could drive your thoughts. Turn this podcast on, it's a lock. Carrie Marshall. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast. I am so excited today to have my friend Taylor Kirby here. Now, I just told you I could introduce you several different ways. <laughs> so here's the one that I'm going to introduce you, though. I can't I can't wait. So Taylor and I, I we actually have worked together uh, writing a chapter for a book. You were in a book collaboration. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, I, was. I always like to say that Taylor was my favorite person <laughs> that I've ever been able to help ghostwrite. I, I love that. Because at one point I needed like one thing from one you. One thing. And it was yeah. a, it was basically like a, hey, can you give me this short little bio about yourself? I think, I think I actually even have it. So because <laughs> when I text you, it popped up. <laughs> oh, it's that's a so Carrie funny. Ghost, Rob's Ghostwriter, and yeah. it has all of these. Look, yeah. it looks like my bio is going going in there. Unless you have anything else you want to add, that's right. It's here. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was the funny part. Is it was this? I mean, writing the chapter, all that you had to say. Mm-hmm. So good. And it was just so funny that that one, one short thing. thing in the bio was like murder, murder for you to do. Yeah. So yeah. once again, this is Taylor. He's my favorite person I've ever ghostwritten for. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. About myself. Um, I'm Taylor Kirby. I live in Mapleton, Utah. Um, I'm a single dad. Very, very happily single. single. So yes. Taylor does a lot of these anonymous questions on oh Instagram, my gosh. Yes. And, which I love. You're right? so open and you're like, hey, ask me questions, ask me something. Yeah, and tell you, me anything. But I think every single time you do it, you get somebody that either says that they have a crush on you right? or asking you if you're looking for right. somebody, right? Are you single? Yeah. Yes, single. Are you dating someone? Who are you dating? Who's your whatever? And I'm like, nobody. Each nobody. time it's like, I'm very single, very want to stay single. Yeah. I have, I have a hashtag that I use NGMA never getting married again. Mm-hmm. That's my hashtag. Yeah. So <clears throat> dad, dad of three amazing kids, one who's about to be 14. She's my oldest, um, and sweetest. And you have her at 14 and then 12 and eight. Awesome. So girl, girl, boy. Yeah. We have four horses, two dogs, Gorgeous property out in Mapleton. Yeah, Mapleton. We, um, I actually went to, I think I went to junior high with your husband. Mm, in Orem. In Orem. Yep. And went to high school with your brother. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're younger, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, well, because I'm older than your brother. Eric. Yeah. Yeah. You're younger than Eric, yeah? I am. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. yeah. So, I went to high school in Orem. I uh, got married. Traveled the world. Well, I traveled the world, then I got married. And um, now I just have fun. So what makes you use that hashtag and also want to be single? Like not want to get married, not want to be in a relationship? We're di- we're just jumping right into it. We're jumping, we're jumping. <laughs> and, and see, you know, I'm very honest. Yeah. And, and, and like, I keep it real. Um, so I think, I think really what it is, is the fact that... Um, I had a hard marriage. I I think every marriage is hard, right? Every marriage has its good things and bad things and blah, blah, blah. Um, My ex-wife is military, PTSD. I was in a PTSD support group. But I think in any marriage, you have highs and lows, ups and downs. And then you have those boundaries of things you will talk about, you won't talk about. And I think where I am now and the counseling I've gone through and the self-work that I've done, I'm going to be real. But the thing is, there are people in your inner circle that I think you you show your real like you know Rob Rob talks about your public self, your private self, and then your secret self, right? Your three your three selves, and the closer you can get them together, that I think the more peace you have. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> like it, it, I think when you that secret self, if you bring those together and you actually show that or let people see that, and then they use that against you. Mm-hmm. There's no going back. And then for me, it was like, I I don't trust people. 
You know, and why would I, I'm not going to be in a relationship, a marriage Mm -hmm. with someone who I feel like in marriage, you should be able to trust that person Mm -hmm. with that secret self. Mm -hmm. I think, I think one of the biggest travesties of our generation and this younger generation is that they have the Instagram self, they have their secret like desires and whatever, and then they have who they are around people, right? Like, cause you have, you present these things. And I think that this generation is too afraid to actually tell those that matter the most what they want because of, of, of a, an image that they've created. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's just, I think right now everyone's so fake and you have so many people who, someone tell me it's called like a side link or something. Cause someone asked me on one of my things, they're like, do you have any like, side links and I was like I don't know what that is uh, yeah I don't even know what that, I don't is. Know what that is and they're like oh it's like you know like a side I was like well I don't have a main so I don't have a side <laughs> <laughs> um, but so my thing is like people are like you know it's just like that secret person you chat with online oh, or whatever right. okay you know or that person over here that no one else knows about and I'm mm-hmm. like why would why would I want to be in a relationship if I'm worried and and now I when we go to dinner and there's people that are doing this Having their phone underneath the table. Under the table and doing stuff or even at church and and they like turn away to text. I'm like, done, hands down. You know, and so for me, it's just I I found peace. And I think that's the biggest thing with with people who get divorced or whatever. I always say, give yourself at least a year Mm -hmm. to find yourself and to heal and to become okay with yourself. Um, Because I think so many of us rely on an interaction to heal, to be happy to find joy, to find peace. And and people say to me all the time, like, you go to dinner by yourself, you go to movies. And I'm like, I post it out there all the time. All the time. And if nobody comes, like, I still go. Because yeah. I'm still going to live my life um, and not wait. But that's hard. It's hard. Like, there are really hard days. But I do think that what you just said is really big, which is I think that sometimes when we're going through something hard, whether it's a separation, divorce, Mm -hmm. um, loss of business, even, you know, so Mm -hmm. many different things that we go through that uh, we do distract ourselves with other people. Mm -hmm. So we'll get way too involved in other people's lives and their drama. We'll, you know, try and hang out too much where we're just really, really avoiding avoiding being alone so that we Mm -hmm. have that time to think and Mm -hmm heal and process what we're going through. Yeah. Well, and what you kept saying that I think is so awesome is that you kept saying peace, you know, so much peace when you just decide. Right. And then say, here's who I am. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be married again. I'm happily single, right. actively trying to stay single. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> right. But then the other thing that you've done really, really well is uh, fill your life up with a lot of fun experiences. Mm-hmm. And people yeah. that you, you know, have brought into your circle. Yeah. And and with that, I mean, like I've gone to masterminds, you've seen that. Mm-hmm. And um, I do a lot. And I invite a lot of people. I mean, I'm <clears throat> I feel like through my work and through my life, I've been blessed with a lot. I have horses, I have some mountain property, I have a, a great home. And so I always post and say, Hey, I'm gonna have a barbecue, I'm gonna have a fire, I'm gonna, we're gonna do an outdoor movie. And I like I'm I'm an introvert who has moments of being an extrovert, but I, I'm that person that likes it at my house, mm-hmm. right? Like it's my comfort zone. And so I I know that there's a lot of people out there struggling and they don't know what to do. Cause I, I'm in groups I've had, since COVID, I've had 19 friends commit suicide, men, Wow. right? Taylor, right. that is crazy. Right? Crazy. And, <clears throat> and I think through that, and some of them are really emotional, but um, through that I learned that so many people are fighting battles that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just an an invitation to like, hey, you wanna come over? Hey, you wanna hang out? And because they feel alone and as single dads, especially, I think we're judged a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. We're looked at a little bit differently, especially here in Utah. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think so often we are alone because we get forgotten. And even in my own friend circle, it's like it disappeared when I got divorced. Because people say, well, I just didn't know if you had your kids this weekend and blah, blah, blah. So we didn't invite you. We didn't call you. And even like guys, like I see your husband go on these guys trips. And I'm always like, I'm so jealous because I used to have that and I don't. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to create that with single dads because we understand the custody weekends and the I have my kids this weekend. I don't have my kids this weekend. I want to do something with my kids and I love to do it with, with people. 
So who's got kids? Mm -hmm. You know, and then I don't have my kids. I'd love to go do something so I'm not home alone. Mm -hmm. And and I think so often people just need that space to be held, to be able to talk, to be able to feel okay, to um, feel included. And so I, I mean, I struggle myself. And so I, I try to provide that for the people. Well, and I love that you say how you do it at your home, because uh, one of the reasons I love selfishly to follow you is uh, Christmas at your house oh, is kind of magic. It's, not, <laughs> it's more than magic. It's, it is actually one of my favorite things on Instagram is <clears throat> right. when you start to post that you're getting ready for Christmas yep. because yep. it is so fun. <laughs> what kind of brought that into your life of, of being so intentional with your space at your at your house? Um, you know, I think it comes down to my mom, right? Mm-hmm. Like, So my mom was born on Christmas. So in our house, Christmas was always her birthday. It was Christmas. She liked to decorate. She was a school teacher and a principal. And so she would always kind of decorate for holidays, but Christmas was always magical. We were Canadian. So we grew up in Canada until we moved in, in like junior high. And so in Canada, for any Americans watching, (laughs) we go, um, Canadian Thanksgiving, which is Columbus day, which is the first part of October. Then you have Halloween, and then we go Christmas. Mm. So growing up, it was like November 1st, anytime after November 1st was free game to set up for Christmas. And so then when we, we moved to the state, and my mom was one that was like, we don't set up before the last holiday. Right. And so then it was always like, but you get like this much Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so for me, and then when I got divorced, when I got that first year after I got divorced was kind of like a rough year. I mean, I think for anybody, but my mom was like, my mom calling. Uh, my mom was like, um, your your house is um, a single dad house. You need some decorations. And granted, I could show you our divorce. In our divorce, we had Christmas because my ex loved Christmas and I love Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so we had 42 tubs. Of Christmas decorations. And we legit had attorneys us about christmas decorations there we pulled them all out into our driveway and we had bins and we literally like one 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 and so christmas since even when i was single before i was married was is like my holiday Mm -hmm. i think it's magic and not getting religious or whatever but i think it's the one time of the year that you can um do things for other people and not be questioned Right. You can do nice things. And it's not like if I were Allison bring you something and say, here, you're going to be like, well, how'd you do that? Yeah, take like, take a neighbor gift around right. and, and people would be <clears> like, know? what? It's or even July. do stuff and say, hey, let's get together. It's Christmas. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I'm going to have a Christmas party. You can't be a let's do back to school. And so I think it's the one time that you can do things for other people and not get questioned and people are willing to accept it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there's just a different vibe. And so my home and my kids love it. My, like, like. My daughter actually yesterday was like, so dad is back to school. When are we starting to set up for Christmas or are we going to do pumpkins first? And pumpkins at my house are also big. I don't do Halloween. I do fall. So I usually when we go back to school, we set up for fall. But so my kids are already asking. So like, are we setting up for Christmas or are we setting up for fall? Uh, Do we need to get the pumpkins out first? (laughs) Pumpkins or Santa Claus? Or can we just decorate the pumpkins with Christmas decorations? Yeah, that's really fun. And so fun that you get to create that with your kids. You know, Mm -hmm. that's one thing that I've noticed about you is how uh, you really love creating experiences for your kids where they are able to be together which is huge. I see Mm -hmm. so many people doing, you know, of course, different activities and things, but that your kids get to be together with a lot of their lessons and things. Right. And then also just what are they loving? We're all in. Right. Right. So tell me a little bit how the horses came about because four horses. Four. We had five. Did you grow up with horses? So I didn't grow up. My grandfather had horses. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we grew up going to grandpa's house and we would ride. Right. And then we moved from Canada here. And when we moved, my dad was like, oh, we'll, we'll get you a horse. Never happened. And then if you remember, I don't think where you lived, but um, Carolyn Puckett lived just north of us. <clears throat> and she had a little ranch, right? And now there's homes there. 
But um, I would go and literally clean stalls to be able to ride. Mm -hmm. And so I, I never, junior high, high school, I had friends that had horses and we had friends that had like a timeshare at like a ranch down in Southern Utah and we'd go down and do that. And then in college, I competed on a Western pleasure team. Oh, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, but Utah That's State. Great. Mm -hmm. And and so it's one of those where like I've always loved it and I felt that connection. And then when I was single, I was traveling the world and it wasn't realistic. And so then when I got married, I said to my wife, I said, I want, I want that. So like that was our goal. We bought some land up in in um whatever it's called. Um Wallsburg. Mm -hmm. and we were going to build up there. It didn't work out. We bought our stuff in, Pro in Mapleton. And then it was like, okay, let's get horses. And then we got a divorce. <laughs> and so about a year after my divorce, I was like, no, I'm going to get, I, I believe in equine therapy. I believe in the magic and power of a horse and that connection. And so I got my first horse and then got my second horse and then got my third. And then we got the last two together. But um, a lot of it was even for my kids as therapy, um, you know, to build that bond and the horse therapy. And so I, I, I believe horses are magic. I really do. And so, you know, it's like you said, you kind of bought it for your kids to kind of process and go through some therapy with it. Mm -hmm. How has that been working out with, with them? Um, I think it's good, you know, and like my oldest daughter, um, her name's Eden. Um, you'll see post most, like she has a real connection with any animal, but she loves the horses and she has three that she really loves the most. And, and there's days where like, let's be real. Um, kids of divorce have hard challenges. I think they feel a lot of guilt, which I think is sad that the marriage ended because of them, which it didn't. Um, I think they just feel a lot of unsurety because they're going to and from two different homes. <clears throat> and so I think it, it gives them somebody to just feel and be and have that connection with. Mm -hmm. And so for me, sometimes they say that they hate it, but then it's funny because when on like a Sunday, I'm going to saddle up and ride. Some of my kids will be like, well, can I go? Well, I want to go. Like if I go, I get to ride that horse. You know, if I ride that horse, I get to go. <laughs> and so I think, I think it's good, you know, and I've seen teacher's responsibility. That's what I was just going to say right? is, you know, sometimes it's that you don't want the responsibility, right? Right. Uh, it's like, Okay, we gotta go clean because the horses are at your house, mm -hmm. and so it's like not just like oh they're boarded somewhere. No. So it's a we daily. We feed. Yep. We feed morning and night. We water and we brush and we ride and we pick feet and we do all that stuff. So yeah. Yeah. yeah so I think sometimes that's sometimes what they're not wanting is that responsibility of it. Yeah. But it's so like you said, it's so huge for kids to have something that needs them. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Where if they don't show up, then there's consequences for it. Yeah. So yeah. I just think that that's really fun to be able to create something so magic for right. time together. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something about whether it's on a boat, you guys went boating the other day on a right. boat where you can't leave. That's what my right. mom, that's what we did right. growing right. up. Right? right. My parents were always like, you can't yeah. leave. You have to spend time together. And we had some, <laughs> some of the best experiences we in like force you to be friends. Well, and it was so, so funny. We had like uh, rules on the boat. Like you couldn't make fun of anybody. Anybody who was out in the water, you always had to be encouraging, you know? Right. And so it was just interesting how I really did think like, Oh, this was a kind of a forced hangout, but it's the same with like horses or something mm -hmm. where it's like, mm -hmm. hey, you can't be on your phone and you can't have 500 friends here because right. it's you and the horse and that's it. Right. And, you know, and your siblings maybe with you, too. So and one thing I'll say, <clears throat> even for adults, one, one reason why I post like, I mean, I love being on a horse. Um, it's like my own therapy just to go up in the mountains. I mean, being in an arena is fine. And it's fun to get a horse to actually perform a pattern or, or whatever, barrels or whatever. Um, but when you're up in the mountains, your kids will tell you every. It's like on a ski lift. Yes. Right? When you're on a ski lift, your kids just chatter, 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 tell, talk about this, this, this. When you're on a trail ride, your kids will tell you everything, whether it's friends, whether it's what they're struggling with, whether, you know, they're frustrated with you. And I think that moment is such a glimpse that you don't get at home when there's screens and TVs and piano lessons and homework and all that stuff going on. 
where it's that moment that that kid has your full attention and you have their full attention. Mm-hmm. And, and so you can just sit and talk and listen and, and have those lessons of life. Um, but it's the same with, adult. I went, I invited, well, I did an open invitation and that friend came and I learned his life story, you know, his highs and lows and ups and downs. And it's interesting what I've learned about people on a horse. Mm -hmm. So, so powerful. Yeah. So you have an interesting job. I do. (laughs) (laughs) Which one? (laughs) Tell us about your job and what you do. You said which one? How many jobs do you have? No, I mean, <laughs> I, I, only have, like, I only have one real I mean, job, right? you're an author. That's one thing. No, but, no, no, but no, no. okay, so tell no, us what we do, what you do. My job, I sell jewelry late at night. <laughs> <laughs> I go live, Facebook Live, and sell jewelry. Um, it's a direct sales company. And so, like, that's my, like, I look at it and here's my jobs, right? My I have a job of, a business of actually selling and making money because it's a real product. I have a real business. I actually just was looking so far this year. I've done six figure like. And so six. great. It's a it's a low end, a low cost product. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I have several of the pieces. I love that. I should give you a lot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I love them. They're <clears> so <throat> great. So you're selling these pieces on Facebook lives, Facebook lives every night late. I mean, and again, that's one thing I love about what I do and working for myself and working from home is the fact that I can make it put work. Put the kids to bed. I put I, So I go live. I get the kids to bed. Mm-hmm. I have that time where I'm dad and I'm focused. I put the kids to bed and then I go live. Mm-hmm. And and I can go live. This is what I was saying. Like school, it's kind of nice for them to go back because then I can go live during the day because mm-hmm. I have a set time where I know I don't have kids running in and out or we're running to the water park or they need to do something where I know I have that window of, okay, I can work now. They're gone. <laughs> and then work when they're in bed. Yeah. During the summer, it's kind of crazy. And so I usually just go live at night. But so I do that and then I run a team, like my team, right? So you mm-hmm. have the business of selling jewelry and then pulling and shipping and invoicing and doing all that stuff. That's that business. And then you have the business of running a team. And in those teams, there's separate teams. And so it's kind of like you work here and work there. And, and it's a business, right? You have okay. different legs where you need different things to grow. So you do different things for different legs and you do different challenges. And so to me, it's one of those where you're working. Mm-hmm. And that to me, that's a different business. Yes, right? I think that that's true. <clears throat> it's kind of like coaching, right? Yep. Like it's like I'm coaching these people and it's not me going live and selling. Mm-hmm. It's it's this as almost a life coach counselor because you hear people's ups and downs and highs and lows and whatever. And then, and then I also feel like I have my own, it's not my own business, but it's, I take the time because I believe in coaching. I believe in that. Like I have Rob and all those people who I go to their masterminds and their things. And I spend that time developing myself. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I feel like I have these three areas in my profession that are my job. I love how you just explained it, though. I've never heard it explained like that with uh, direct sales or network marketing, where it is those three di- separate jobs. But mm-hmm. that really is what you're doing. Yeah. And they're all very different skill sets mm-hmm. um, yeah. to but be able to do. They're all tied. You know, like right. to, to I, I really believe that to be a great leader, you also have to be able like there are people who are just great recruiters mm-hmm. in this industry, but <clears throat> they don't set the example of how to promote or sell the product, which to me you have to sell the product. I don't care what it is that you sell. If you don't have a product that's worth selling and actually having sales, you don't really have a product. You have you have an opportunity. Mm. And the opportunity to me is secondary to the sales because I look at it and I say, for us at least, you can go live. Everything is a low price point where you're not asking anyone to really step out of their comfort zone to buy your product. And <clears throat> it's fashion. Right? It's, fashion, it's fashion. It's fun. And and so, so awesome. it's easy. And so I look at it and I say, that's an easy sell. Mm-hmm. And then if you need 20 bucks, if you need to buy a drink, mm-hmm. you could post something, talk to somebody. You could be wearing something and then have somebody say, oh, I want those. Oh, I have them. You yeah. know, and then you make that money. And it's not a big, there's no science. There's no, my thing is I've never been one to, I don't like weight loss products? Because I don't like saying to somebody like, do you want to lose 20 pounds? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is I get pitched that all the time and I'm like, do I, do I need this? <laughs> so my thing is I love what I do in the fact that um, people can get a quick sale mm-hmm. and and 
make some money. Mm -hmm. And then if they want to build a team, they can build a team. But yeah. it's not, I'm not recruiting you to bu only build a team. Well, and the one thing that I've noticed about people that are on your team is they all have a passion for the fashion of it. Mm -hmm. And they're so great at it. You know, I've met several of your team members at different retreats or whatever. And, right, right, yeah, but been. it's just really yeah, yeah. cool to see how much they love it. And that kind of trickles down from leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Of just like, hey, thanks for thanks for coming. Like I got a set of jewelry from uh, somebody. I was like, this is cool. Yeah. I was like, how easy was that? Right. And But they're just so good at it. Right. So what right now you just got done with convention down in Vegas. Mm -hmm. What was your biggest takeaway from going? So a convention for anybody that's not in this is when your entire company comes together. Mm -hmm. Seventeen thousand people. So we had, yeah we had seventeen thousand people in Vegas. <clears throat> the MGM. So we we kind so of fun. own the MGM. <laughs> I bet you. And the one thing you should know about this company, they are fun. fun. They are so much fun. <laughs> So we were just saying you guys ha held like tons of parties, yeah. basically owned MGM for the time you guys were there. We did. So we filled the their garden arena and we had private concerts. We had, you know, training meetings. We had all that stuff. And then we had all these parties. And so I think my biggest takeaway from convention, oh, that's a hard one, actually. Like um, our, our theme like in the industry and in any convention really that you go to has a theme. And our mm -hmm. theme was made for more. Right. And I think through COVID and through all of that stuff, um, life just got so crazy. And then I think even with where the economy is and even where life is, like um, this last week, um, there's another person in the industry who's also a coach and a trainer who there's some drama going on in the industry right now with a couple of different companies. <clears throat> and I think I've seen a little bit about this. You've seen a little yesterday. bit about this? Yep. And so she went live and she's like, what the hell? I, I take a sabbatical for like three weeks. <laughs> And then it's like Instagram and the world has gone to on <laughs> Bunkers, fire, right? Yeah. You know, and and she's like, I don't know what's going on, and blah blah blah, and I'm going to set the record straight, and I'm going to do this. And I think so far right now, people are like, people don't want to admit it, but I think so many people are struggling or on that verge of financial collapse mm -hmm. that they're scrambling to find that quick buck. Mm -hmm. And and I think you can do that, but tied to that, like the, this whole made for more is the fact that I really believe, even in that situation, you're made for more as a leader, you're made for more as a person, like that quick money grab is, is such a, is such a almost slap in the face to the industry, but also slap in the face to you as a person. And to the customers. To the customers, right? Yeah. Because you're trying to do this thing. And and so I look at it, my biggest takeaway is that you really are made for more. Mm. And, and it's not just what's happening right now. It's not what's happening two years ago. Um, and, with that, though, it was interesting because, again, I feel like through COVID, I mean, every company in network marketing and in, in direct sales had this massive spike during COVID because everyone was home and they lost jobs, they needed money, and so they had this thing. And then now when people have gone back, a lot of people have stepped away. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people <clears throat> don't want to admit that their sales or their numbers are down. And I think a lot of people are sad and depressed because they were used to those COVID numbers. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to find that that middle ground. And so they're doing things that aren't there. And with all of that, I think in teams and in companies, there became a lot of kind of dog eat dog. And our company, at least at convention, you, there was the first time in years, and I hate saying this, but it was the first time in years that you saw leaders from very competitive teams coming together and working and saying, let's let's go on tour. So we have this tour that's coming up that they're I'm not I'm not a part of it, but all these leaders came together and said, let's unite all of our teams as leaders and let's go out on tour for everybody to lift the whole. Mm -hmm. And I and I looked at that, it was a very like I'm not spiritual, but just like this moving moment of this is what it's about, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're back, we're back to where what really matters is we're here to lift mm -hmm. and we're here to rise. And I mean, 99% women, but to see women supporting women who want women to, you know, overcome abuse, overcome self-doubt, overcome generational curses of just even mental thought processes, mm -hmm. to see them all come together, you know, black, white, Asian, whatever, like Latino, 
all of them come together and say, let's put our differences aside because we are here to lift people. And so that was, I think that was my biggest takeaway is to see the unity that we have right now. Well, and like you said, I think watching the industry and being able to have a convention where you can then say like, this is what it's all about. Right. You know, it's not about the competitiveness, but, and that really one of the best things about your company is that 99% of women. Um, so, so you wrote for Rob Sperry. So you'll see, you, you heard us mention a couple of times, Rob, we're talking about Rob Sperry, Rob Sperry. Um, <laughs> but so you were, so, I don't usually call him Rob Sperry, <laughs> <laughs> but so we were, you were saying, you know, the, the you were part of his book, mm-hmm. but then also I've helped several of your leaders, you know, mm-hmm. be part of yeah. those collaboration books. Yeah. But that is the thing that still to this day brings tears to my eyes hearing these women and Mm -hmm. the situations that they are coming from Mm -hmm. and how saying yes to the opportunity and then having somebody like a leader like you uh, believe in them and teach them. And then they were able to take uh, some jewelry and then go and actually provide for their family. Right. That's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing to be able to hear those stories and see where they're at and then see the passion behind letting other people know. And I think that that's what's kind of coming back around again right now, like you said, is as we kind of see the market struggle, Mm -hmm. people struggle, it's like, what's the next thing? So how can I help supplement my income? Right. So tell me, since you've been in network marketing, direct sales for a while. 21 years. 21 years of it. Yeah. Why do people have such a negative... uh, image around network marketing? <clears throat> That's a good question. Um, you know, because really when you look at it, there are so many companies that you don't know that are. And so it's interesting to me because some people will be like, I love this company. And I'm like, That's network marketing. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, but and so when they find that out, they're like, Oh, you know, and, and it's so interesting because um, like, for instance, P90X, which everyone was on board with P90X. Oh, absolutely. P90X, like who didn't buy P90X? We and be all like, had we P90X. All... I did what Trey or whatever his yeah. name was. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm, I'm on his. Name. Oh, I love P90X. Oh, look at this, I'm shredded. Yeah. P90X. P90X was a network marketing company, mm-hmm. right? Part of Beachbody. Um, Zumba is yep. a network marketing company, right? Like there are all these companies that people are like, what? That's not network. No, I go to Zumba all the time. She's. She's a network marketer. She's a network marketer. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so when you buy her stuff or when you do this or you buy her supplements or you buy that, you're buying her product. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's it, a lot of times it's how it's presented. It's how it's done. And <clears throat> for me personally, I think what gets hard is when you have an overpriced product based on a marketing spin. Meaning mm-hmm. uh, I worked for some of the juice companies. I've worked for some of those things. And and. <laughs> I'm a horrible person because I always love the the magic berry that was picked at midnight with the mist of the moon, with the <laughs> unicorn that blessed it. Yes. And it's so much better than what you can buy at Costco. Right. Right. And the stuff at Costco is garbage because our stuff was blessed by a monk mm-hmm. who drinks tea at two o'clock that was blessed by Buddha himself. You know, and, and it's like this marketing story of why ours is better than Costco. Costco. Yeah. And we all love Costco. I love Costco, right? Um, And so my thing is, I think it's that story that people don't like. Because it's like, Mm -hmm. well, why is yours $100 and I can go to Costco and get it for $40? Mm -hmm. You know, well, you don't understand and ours is so much better. And I think that's where people get it is everyone looks at the value. And that's what I love about my situation. Mm -hmm. You can't beat it. Oh, you, you can't. Know, you can't. You like, you can't. Be like, not at Walmart. Jewelry not at, prices. <clears throat> inflation. So, yeah. in 12 years, we haven't changed our price. 12 years, we're still there. And so, I've never felt bad about our opportunity. Where other opportunities, I don't need a $65 ice cream scoop. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Give it a minute and it'll be a little bit softer and I can scoop it out with my Walmart $2 scoop, right? right. Like, and so, my thing is, <clears throat> there are some great companies and some great products out there. I think what people have a hard time with is it's even that that structure of do you actually teach people to sell the product mm-hmm. or just to create a group and, and recruit other people recruit. to do it instead of <clears throat> saying have a business. Yes, you have you know, to have a then, business and, and then, sell products. And then people say like, oh, well, I don't want and, and even right now. And it's hard because like everyone's talking about social retailing and doing all this stuff where you don't have to do anything. And I look at it and I say that's not true because even those people who are killing it at social retailing 
spend a ton of time, podcasts, reels, mm -hmm. you know, all this stuff. They spend hours and hours and hours a day creating content to create a following, to create that stuff. And, mm -hmm. and so I think it's, it's a smoke and mirror image that has created that negativity mm -hmm. where I think if you're honest and I say it's hard work or like I work every single day, but I also look at it and say, I worked that corporate gig where I made $200,000 a year and I worked 80, 100, 120 hours a week. You know, I traveled the world. I was going to and from Texas. I'd work in Texas two weeks and home two weeks. And when I was in Texas, I'd work 18 hour days. Mm -hmm. and so I look at it and I say, but now I'm at home and I'm still working a lot, but my kids are around and if they need something, I can stop and then get back to it. So I think why is it people pitch a dream that is hard to attain as opposed to saying, hey, let's help you pay this. And it's going to be work and you it's are, you, you will be working. Yeah. And, and you will cry yeah. a lot and you'll say bad words and you'll throw <laughs> stuff because it's frustrating. You're dealing with people. Business is frustrating. I think that that's something that we don't ever mm. talk about is that when you are working a business and not just going to clock in. I was going to say, when you're an entrepreneur and you yes. own a business. When you own totally a business. Different. it's As a coach, yeah. there's days where clients drop or whatever or something happens and then you're just like. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to a coach from the other day and she goes, is there ever like a week where you don't think about quitting and just like closing? And I said, no. Right. And she goes. Yeah, I think that's just entrepreneurship. Right, 100%. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. And sometimes it's amazing and you love it and all of that. But Because the blessing, I think the blessings of, and, and Mark Cuban, I, I play this all the time to myself. Mark Cuban, I think it was even on Shark Tank. Someone said something. He said, I would rather make $50,000 a year and work for myself than make $500,000 a year, year and work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because it's my time. You know, it's my time and it's my goals. And if I push it, then I can create whatever I want to. Mm -hmm. and so I think about that all the time. Like I would rather make $50,000 and be able to live my life mm -hmm. how I want than work for somebody else and be told what to do and then try to create a life with what time I have left. Because you've done both. I've done both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to see probably the difference of, you know, working those huge, huge hours and then trying to create your life around that versus now. And I think yeah. the other thing, too, about entrepreneurship is I know that the, whatever energy I put in, when it comes back, I know that I did that. Right. That's a pretty <clears throat> great feeling. It's an amazing feeling. Like when you see, like I see your posts. I, I watch you. You know that. Um, but you post about like your clients who came in and had this dream and then they did this. To see people, one, overcome doubt and fear, um, two, achieve their own personal success, and then change like you like there's a change like <clears throat> you've seen some of the people in my, in my organization like i've seen them come in as divorced single moms and now they have like million dollar mansions in atlanta or you know and <clears throat> and creating amazing jobs for other women like other that's women. yeah I was, and, and even become leaders themselves like yes. they came in as this lonely person just looking for help mm -hmm. and now they're these strong leaders and, and that shift, like, so the entrepreneur, like, there's the money side, but then there's that, like, that's, you can't buy it. You know what I mean? And the, the, and the, the service and giving that happens from there mm -hmm. is just incredible. Yeah. I mean, it, like, once again, to go back to kind of to your team, I'm just kind of thinking through some of the women and what they've right. done for their local communities, mm -hmm. what they do. Colleges. World, yeah, colleges. World, fraternities, sororities. Yes. And worldwide, mm -hmm. some of them are, are you know. Flying all these. Tyrika yes. has her Tyrika African in, uh, orphanage mm -hmm. that she works with, and yeah, and that's just really cool to be mm -hmm. able to see the far reach that doing all three of types of the business can go mm -hmm. and do for you. Yeah, it's amazing. So, what is your favorite thing about selling jewelry online, Facebook Lives? <laughs> <laughs> when it's done. <laughs> no, uh, my favorite thing about selling jewelry on live late at night is I think, <clears throat> one, I don't know if you know this, I have a fashion design degree. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I love fashion even before this was created. I have a degree. I went to school in California at Brooks College. I got the number one. Uh, I got first place in design competitions. I sewed with your brother, actually, yes. in high school. <laughs> Um, and I did all these things. And so I love fashion. I mean, normally I'm in a t-shirt and shorts, but I love 
seeing the trends. I love seeing that, even though I like live in Wranglers and boots and stuff at my house. So I love to see it. And, and my thing is people say, you don't have a disposable product, right? It's not a consumable. Mm -hmm. And I look at it and say, our price point <laughs> is. Oh, it totally is. But the other thing is, how often do you change your hats? You know, how, no. many, how many hats do you have? How many oh. shoes do you have in your house? Yes. I've seen your husband's collection and yes. yours is, I don't know whose is whose, but. Oh, his is so much bigger his than His is mine. so much bigger? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, again, it's like that, like saying, well, that's not a, a consumable. You're telling me shoes aren't a consumable? Mm -hmm. You might have them, but it's like that new pair comes out and mm -hmm. I see your husband like, I got these. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? <laughs> Same thing with jewelry. Like, your fashion changes so much. Mm -hmm. You have those legacy pieces that you wear all the time. But what I love is to see, like, if you, if you don't know this, in our product, every day we have what's new release. So as opposed to other companies where you have the same product and everyone's selling the same product, every day we get 15 to 25 new pieces. 15 to 25 new pieces of jewelry every single day. Like that creative process is mind boggling to me. Five days a week to have 20 new pieces, like that's, you know. And so, so for instance, you could get some pieces, mm -hmm. but then somebody down the street would have something totally, totally different. different. And so that's kind of what I've seen is like. That's what I love. Mm -hmm. And even when you see the other people who are live, I watch sometimes I'm like, you got that? I didn't get that. <laughs> or like, oh, you still have that? Like I saw that two years ago. Right. And so you have these customers that come and go and the product. But then again, it's fashion comes and goes and mm -hmm. colors come and go and seasons come and go. And so you have stuff that works and, and then doesn't and then does. And summer you have more of the light, bright stuff and you have mm -hmm. shells and you have anklets and you have that. Or winter you have sweaters. So what I love is is that right i love the fashion side of it because i love watching the trends and seeing what's coming out and then seeing how i can help you know accessorize the other thing that i love which most people don't know this i when you get to know your jewelry your product you know your product right like you know your product yeah <clears throat> so i love watching shows i mean whether it's a tv show um uh, an award show because our product five dollars shows up at the Met, it shows up at Oscars, Emmys, Grammys, in music videos, like album covers. And I'm like, people think that's expensive and it's $5, <laughs> I've got that. Like, I don't know who their stylist is, but I love them. Yeah. You know, from, so I love to see it on Family Feud. I love to see it on, in movies, because I'm like, that's ours. You know, yeah. and then I would screenshot it and post it and be like, you want this? It's five bucks, I got it. Well, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> because people think so often that these celebrities at the Met are wearing Tiffany's and it's like, no, that's mine. Mm -hmm. You know, because people are like, because of the price point, but then the other thing I love about going live is, again, that community that I built. I'm real. We have late night conversations. We have Mental Health Mondays um, where we have these conversations. And I've literally received messages from people saying I was going to kill myself. But because of your Mental Health Monday or because you went live, I needed that boost just to stay one more day. Um, I've created this community of people. And they're like my friends. And you know, Saturday we do Saturday car wash, we do all this stuff. And so to see the conversations and I've seen people through suicides, I've seen people through cancer, I've seen th people through um, losing people in, during COVID. I've seen, I've seen so many people and it's like, I love, like I, when I see them, I get excited because it's like, again, my social so circle is small here, but it's like, it's my friends mm -hmm. and we get to hang out. It's kind of like this, yeah. but late at night, and I'm talking into a phone. <laughs> That's awesome. So what do you want to have for your family next? Like, what's the next thing that you really want to create with your kids? <sighs> you know, it's funny because I get mad at you and Rob often. Because <laughs> the next thing I really want to create, and this is going to sound dumb, but I think it's very achievable. But well, one, I want to finish my basement. Mm -hmm. I've had some flooding issues and we've got some things to do before I can do that. <laughs> um, I want to finish my basement. But the next thing I want to do is have a pool. Because here's my thing. We never had a pool growing up. I had cousins that did and friends that did. But those moments, I think, and like Rob said, Rob heats his pool all winter. Mm. Yes. Which you know? is crazy. Which is crazy. But he said, I look at it and I say, that's one vacation. What it costs me mm -hmm. to keep it is one vacation. But the times and memories that my kids and their friends create is worth that one vacation, the cost of that one vacation yeah. to heat my pool all winter. Yeah. And I have friends that have like this little thing that rolls 
over their pool mm -hmm. and then it's like a room right like it's oh have cool. you seen that no i should show you it's so cool it literally is like it's almost like a tent huh and it literally they have a track and it rolls over That's and, awesome. and then it just folds it folds so they have yeah. it open all summer but if it's rainy they do it and That's then amazing. then they roll it over for the winter and then they can use it all winter my gosh and, <clears> that is cool. I, so cool i need one of those now right <laughs> and and so i look at it and i say that's my next thing because i have a daughter who struggles teenager body image mm -hmm. whatever with being in a swimsuit out in public but she we had a i call it a white trash pool an above ground pool yep yep we and, did we had one of yeah. those first <laughs> and she's like can we get one of those i would go swimming there mm -hmm. and i think just to have that safe space and just the time, like there's nothing, like there's an REM song called Night Swimming. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. We would listen to it at Lake Powell yes. at dark. We'd turn yep. it on, kick the lights <laughs> on the boat and swim in the night, right? And I think those times were like, I remember going to my friend's houses or, or cousins and kick on the light at night. We'd swim. And it was just like these magical moments of memories that I had that I want for my kids. Mm -hmm. My neighbors all have pools. My kids are like, when when can we have our own? Because we sit and wait or we sit and watch them. And my kids are like, so that's my next thing. That and then getting actually like my mountain house built because we love going up there. And I would love to be up there in the winter when it's snowing and magical and do that. So those are my next things is to literally create those like home places. Home experiences. Home experiences. Yeah. I mean, we've traveled, we've done those things and there's places I want to take them like Bali and Africa. Mm -hmm. um, but to have those experiences where like those memories are set in their soul is what's next. I love that. Right? And it's just so fun when we can create those at home. There's right. just something so incredible. You know, uh, we when we bought our house, it came with the pool. Of course, we didn't build it, but lucky. <laughs> um, I know it was awesome. But I always tell Curtis, I'm like, if I had to choose between a boat and a pool, because we came from a boating family, we didn't have a right. pool growing up. Um, I'm like, I would, I would change, I would pick a pool. Yeah. And it's just been really fun for us to have it. And it was interesting listening to Rob talk about. Um, he said, I knew I could either buy another investment property mm -hmm. or buy a pool, and I and my I wanted the investment property. And his wife talked him into the pool. And afterwards, I said, So what do you think? And he goes. It was a good idea right? Yeah. <laughs> because of all of the things that have been happening. Yeah. So one last thing that I want to ask you is you're so good at talking to people that are struggling right now. Mm -hmm. If there are podcast listeners out that are struggling right now, what is something that you can kind of give them encouraging words as we kind of leave? Ooh, that's like deep. I know, right? We're, we're ending on a deep <sighs> note here. What's one thing for someone that's struggling? Um... I don't know. You know, like that's that's a it's a hard one because I look at it and and there's so many facets, whether it's financial, um, and and for me, I might speak more to the single dads. Yeah, that's great. Um, because you're seen, you know, and you're needed and you're appreciated more. And and my thing, I was single dads. Make sure you're upholding your responsibilities. Um, I think that adds to it, but. Those who are struggling, whether you're in a tough marriage, whether you're in whatever, um, people want to help. People are willing to help. It's scary to ask for help. Um, whew, you're trying to get me emotional here today. Couldn't That's have, what I do. I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, because with it... <clears throat> I just lost a friend to cancer and that one's still really hard for me. And I look at it and I say, I would give anything to have that person here. And so you look at somebody who's struggling and you have so many people that would give anything if you were gone to have you here, they would help you financially. They would help you emotionally. They would come clean your house. They would come mow your lawn. If, if they knew where you were. And I, and I think so often we don't want to be that burden. And I understand that I've been there. Um, but you have people who love you more than you know. And just know that you're, you're really trying to get me emotional. If you're a parent, if you're a parent, like, so my sister is a widow, her husband died. And I have several friends that are widows or widowers. 
And to see the kids struggle. And then I had a friend, Neil Curry, who took his life. I have a couple of friends. I mean, I have a couple of friends who have taken their lives. To see my buddy Justin, um, to see their kids struggle, just know your kids would rather give everything away and to have you. And so I think you have to find those moments of saying, you know what? If I went from a 10,000 square foot house to an apartment. Totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah. You might you might feel crushed and devastated inside because you failed because you had that pool. Mm -hmm. You had that boat. And now you drive a 1987 Yugo. But your kids are going to remember you. Right. And so I look and it's hard. It's hard when you're struggling. It's hard when you're in that space. I've been there. I've been there recently. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I look at it and I say, those are things that pull me out. So if you're struggling, here's my thing is just remember Although the Instagram world, although Facebook land, although your friends talk about, and, and we see it, we see the, I see it all the time with people that I know and I'm friends with, the private jets, the, the, we're headed to Mexico with all of our friends. We're going to New York to go to the show. And then you're like, I don't have two cents to put in to buy my kids school clothes. Mm -hmm. And, and here's the thing, stop trying to live a life that you think others will admire you for. And, and this is where like being single and where I'm at as a dad is I want my children to remember me being present. I would rather have nothing and go on no vacations, but to go for walks with my kids at night, to go for horseback riding, to go spend time, to sit on the couch and watch a movie, not even go to the theater, sit on the couch and watch a movie. That's how I grew up. We mm -hmm. blockbuster, you know, like <laughs> Friday nights. Right? And so my thing is you don't have to go out to restaurants, make pizza at your house, mm -hmm. buy the dough, make it. You know, and those are the memories. So when when you're struggling because you see the the success of other people, just remember your children don't care about that. Just remember that other people don't care what you have. They love you. And, and so that's my thing is if you're struggling, you just have to get back to that basic of if people love you for what you have, let them go. Mm. Because the people who matter most won't care about those things and they'll carry you through those and they might help you and lift you to a new level but when it comes if you're struggling if you're on that suicide watch list if you're on that if you're even just struggling mentally to get yourself out of bed go for a walk do those things like feel feel the nature feel the stuff lay on the ground do those things because you will be reminded of and someone said when you're in that remember to be that like 10 year old self go play Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's not go buy something. It's not go spend this on your kids. It's not go to this Disneyland, Disney World, not going to Hawaii, not doing those things. It's to literally go play, go play a board game, go play something and find that joy again, because that is what really matters. So if you're struggling, my thing is just remember possessions really don't bring happiness. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. I love spending time with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so much fun. So where can people find you? Where can people find <clears throat> you to, if they want to come and hang out late night with you? If you want to come hang out, um, I have on my Facebook, it's Taylor Kirby Pro. That's okay. where my professional, right? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's where I do my business. My personal, if you want to see my family and kids is Taylor Kirby, K-I-R-B-Y. Um, and then on Instagram, I, again, I have two, um, my business Instagram is the Bearded Bling Boss. So it's it. <laughs> Instagram under Bearded Bling Boss. Um, and then my personal is, because it's kind of a nickname um, in high school, it's called Curbster. So it's um, Instagram.com at Curbster, whatever. Awesome. And so, yeah, so I'm on Instagram and that. So I have my personal whatever, but um, I always post if you want to hang out locally on my personal pages. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for inviting me. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah. We should just do this more often. I know, right? <laughs> All right. Well, come and catch us over on Instagram and we'll see you guys later. Yep. Bye. Thanks for listening to this podcast episode. If you're ready to get in the driver's seat of your own life, you can come and follow me at Drive Your Thoughts Coaching on Instagram or come and see more ways to work with me at driveyourthoughts.com. Yeah, whether ready or not, life's coming hard, no breaks, no stop. And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted. 
I never drop If you feel a bit out of control and out the box Here's a way that you can drive your thoughts Turn this podcast on, it's a lock Kerry Marshall on the clock